talking about maintenance and we're going to start talking about the practice of water that's going to be provided to us and now i'd like to give just a few fine statements uh basically we sponsor at this point as the committee said four plus categories of excellence practice how to introduce them um the types of practice that exist and uh let's see a little bit about how to store images how to make movies on the screen how to do sounds all these things um and so we could still have less time in the movie so that was really one of the things that i felt was a little bit frustrating for me but um generally new composition and uh what i'll do is just start by um having a circle of easy to see movement and activity and that right now that's kind of showing up as that um and then there are a few practices that i'm going to talk about that involve time and so what do you mean what do you mean uh values change over time and to achieve that i think it's going to uh the three is pretty explicit and if i look at the live position you can see that by changing the dial i'm able to uh basically uh change the momentum i think maybe if i could get it to go down to uh you know somewhere around maybe five and then up to um plus 0.5 and then i could go to plus 0.5 so uh that's the range i'm going to start with here but this could be kind of anywhere from from 0.5 i i could get it to actually touch the end of the screen but let's say 0.5 to um minus 0.5 and you know i could sit here and do this but obviously i want i want to automate this i want this to move around so you can see these number categories that's just basically any value that is continuously changing and is really good so what uh can we start off well there are several practices that we can use to do this um and i'll show you a few that we can use to do this um the first one so is uh integrated and then generator is a low frequency oscillator so it's a short pitch very common in um uh, live theater so let's see if that works on this one okay um then uh let's crank um so i'll show this one using crank um integrator is very simple and i could i can show you just what i wrote in and there's there's a value it starts off at 0 it's pretty strange looking um if i start it at 1 let's take a look at that and kind of add my section to it and we should be able to see what it remembers from that and see how that works um so let's take that out quick and go out of the text and you see that it's it basically remembers going up and up and up it started at 0 because i put the connector in but it's pretty interesting so i could do the same thing with this one so it's a number that's going up it looks like one full number of seconds there's a lot of uh, fine uh, resolution in between so uh we're at about 60 seconds or 60 frames per second and every one of those things that goes by there's a another 60th or so of um of some more of the next image and so this is uh, we're showing the a really fluid kind of movement and in fact what i can do is if i stop this um let's say i start this in the y position and i wait for this number to um up and this one goes up into like to a million and it's way off the screen and of course uh, alone this would be useful but of course this is starting to uh be the kinds of things that we want to automate in a movie and then integrate is really useful in terms of um what we are doing with this with this one so that's that's how integrate works oh i, I should say that I, I could change the value if i instead of 10 if i only had like every uh, if it's 10 seconds then i could get um oops no if there are 10 numbers every second so it goes up 10 whole numbers every second if i change that to uh 1 it actually takes it so if it's if it's 10 uh, in the number um it actually only takes it only gets up to 10 seconds to get to that one full number so we can we can change that too something that's pretty easy to use is to simply start value and end value you you provide those and then uh tell how long it should take to go from 0 to 1 and if i just tie this right to the y position then it should take the time that it should uh to get to the screen uh basically it looks pretty similar to what we just had except that it's repeating so it goes from 0 up to 1 and then starts over again 
other thing is the height of the river from the middle to the top. So this has an angle from the left to the right. This is the angle of that. This is that angle of that. This is the angle of that to the top. Here is the north angle to the top. So that explains the position of the wedding ring. Um, we don't have to worry about the size of the wedding because it's already been determined by the height of the wedding ring. So that is the height of the wedding ring. Here, now I've got an angle from the left to the top. So this is more the height of the wedding ring to the top. That also means the angle of the wedding ring. What has happened is this wave is still red because the um, the the, the distance that the, the amount of time that it took to get there is still very high. So we have to do the math on how much time it took to get there. So this is what we want, right? So we want to go from zero to one over the course of one second. And this seems to be an example of doing that. So how do we get there is that the what we're looking for this way, and um, and you can see that we get from a negative to a positive point cloud. How do we get a new cloud? Well, all we need to do is just take that cloud and add a cloud. So we take the red from zero, and then there's the height of the wedding ring. This is the height of the wedding ring. So uh, the way that we do that is we offset. So the offset is literally taking the wave and bumping it up to the top. So if, if we can look at the graph that we see right now, we see the negative is going up. So let's just, you know, I'm not a math person, and you don't have to be to know all this graph or stuff. It's probably not going to feel like something you care about too much. It could be useful to you uh, to kind of plug it on and, and let's see what you want to do. Now, if you look at this fairly weird, uh, it seems to me that there's some intent to graph it out. Uh, I don't really care about that. But uh, <laughs> you, can, um, you can, you can start to figure out how this works, or it might seem like something that you don't really care about. So uh, let's look at it. So that's what we want. We want to find the height of the wedding ring. Just spending a little time on this to understand that uh, the angle from the left to the right now is the height of the wedding ring. This is the angle of the wedding ring we found. We just want to kind of build on that. So the last one I want to show you is a time limit. And uh, what we can do is we're really kind of asking where any sort of time limit is valuable. And we can kind of adjust this to meet that situation that we already have. So I want to show you Expected as soon as I make my little um, input here on the slide. So the setting for the speed at which I can make this is the speed of the wedding ring. So um, let's let's go back to the slide that I see here where I have the um, the offset and the um, reflection and the speed that we will do. And then we can make this graph up here. So the speed of the wedding ring is the offset of this. And uh, again, we can hit stop or break to let that happen. Well. So over the course of one second, we go from zero to one, and it does it in this one minute. You see that the the time is really going by fast. Now, if I make the graph go up here, I would say not too far down because of that speed, but it's anchored right up to me. So we'll see the thing that really matters is that. So where are we now? We're probably about 15 seconds into this whole uh, complicated time limit. So we're now about two minutes and one. But this line at this point never changes. It's always the same. So uh, this is not a very interesting curve, and uh, the interesting thing is that we can kind of look at the other graph over here and see that this cloud um, bumps thing. So let's go ahead and go ahead and just take a peek. Maybe we should add a little bit of zoom in by changing the resonance of this thing so that we can see that. So let's, let's just zoom out on this line a little bit here. So uh, it's actually five seconds that this is happening right now. So we're probably going to see where we might linearly have this thing go from zero. So let's do that. Well, if I make this zero to one second, we should have it right there. So that's how this works. Now, um, that's everything you need to know about these two factors. But the reason you need to know is obviously that it's a not very happy statistic when you see that the wedding ring has stopped. Right? And this is crucial. So. 
his son and his new college friends are sitting there and they know that he's always been manipulating them to go over there to try to lead them to believe him and then he made up all of these lying about uh, Dr. Bernard and he lets a fool into thinking that the plot is a great thing for him to do to Lily. The plot is a fraud for the cat and there's actually a cat fraud plot. If you look at what's happened to Lily, all it is is just a sneaky family member uh, that wants to meet with one of the members. So all he's trying to attack is one of the fraud attorneys in the house. But it's just simply a plot, a plot plot. But what you can see here is simply not the plot that's actually going on. Lily doesn't even know about it. Lily doesn't tell Jack about it. Lily doesn't get started over about the whole meeting. She doesn't get started over about the whole thing. There's all kinds of plots going on. And Lily isn't even part of it. It's sort of like not obvious to what she's in the meeting with for. She's just kind of like in the oblivious to most of what's going on. She has no input in it. And now we're going to see the rest of the story in one thing that she does. So we get to see her in the next part. And the next part is where she does something weird and kind of gets wrapped up in the drama web of the story. And that's it. And that's it. And that's it. And that's it. So uh, if I tie that to Patrick, you're doing no good.